Hello. Okay, so for this exercise, uh, I've actually already produced a sort of a prequel video that uh, goes through a very simplified version of this same problem to hopefully illustrate how the calculations work, how the formula works, uh, and why. So with this video, now what I'm going to do is we'll just start off with the formula itself, which uh, is going to be this frequency or this probability of k successes, so how many successes, uh, is going to be equal to the number of trials. So in this exercise, we're counting students walking into a room, and we're looking at the how many of them are going to be females. So we're looking at uh, the number of trials, that's the number of students walking into the classroom, and uh, k is our success, and so we're just arbitrarily defining a female student walking into the room as a success. And this is times our probability associated with a success, and the one minus p uh, and the number of, of failures. So k is the number of successes, and minus k is the number of failures. p is the probability of a success, this one minus p would be the probability associated with failure, which in this case is a male student walking in the room. Okay, so now it's just a matter of plugging in the numbers um, into, into our formula. So part A, compute the probability that your class of 20 students will contain exactly 5 females. Okay, so we have the probability of 5 exactly 5 successes, 5 females, we have 20 experiments, we're choosing 5, so this first part of the calculation is 20 factorial over 5 factorial times 20 minus 5 factorial, right? That's the number of combinations, the number of different possible experimental outcomes uh, in which we can have 20 students coming in and five of them are female in any combination in any particular order. So that's going to be some big number. I think it's over 15,000 different ways in which we might achieve that, uh, that experimental outcome. So we might achieve five females uh, of the 20. What are the probabilities associated with this now? So now we're looking at this part here. So the probability of a female, probability of a success, uh, so this is going to be 0 0.4, that's my probability associated with a success out of how many successes? 5, 1 minus 0.4, well that's 0 0.6, that's what we have here, right? 1 minus 0.4 is 0 0.6, that's my probability associated with a male student entering the room, and n minus k, so 20 minus 5. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and do this calculation. And so that's 15. Now let's get my calculator here. Uh, so this is going to be 20 factorial, wow, divided by 5 factorial times 15 factorial. So 15,504 possible experimental outcomes that result in five of the 20 students being, uh, being female. So different orders in which they might enter. And the probability associated with each is then times that by 0.4 to the power of five times, and this I know is 0.6 to the power of 15. So there we have it, 0 0.075. 0 0.075. So there's about a 7.5% chance that of 20 students who walk in the room, 7.5% chance that 5 of them will be females. Now, let's go through maybe a little bit more quickly these other possibilities. Compute the probability that your class of 20 will contain no females. So I'm just going to cheat. I'm going to change these values. So this is 0. This is 20. Choose 0 successes. 
here's 0.4 times 0, and so this is just going to be 20. So, uh, let's I'll just rewrite this out a little bit. So this is going to be 20 factorial over 0 factorial times 20 factorial. So that's just going to be 1. 0.4 to the power of 0. That's also just going to be 1. So all this really is, is 0.6, which is what we have here, raised to the power of 20. So that means no females. That means 20 consecutive failures. So here we can look this up. 0.6 to the power of 20. Very small. Four zeros and let's round it to four. 0 0.1234 and round that to four. So a very small chance that given those probabilities, very small chance that of the 20 students that walk in, they will all be men. Okay, compute the probability that your class of 20 students will contain less than five females. So this one, let's do this one the shorter way. Rather than calculating all of these probabilities, there's actually an easier way to do it. If we want to know the probability that a class of 20 students will be less than five, so what we want is the probability of four plus the probability of three plus the probability of two, one, and zero. So that's a lot of calculations. We'd have to do this calculation here five times in order to figure this out. So for this problem, let's use our table, our binomial distribution table. So I'm going to pull this up, see if I can get it out of the way a little bit here, easier for us to use. Okay, so what we have here in this table, and all tables are going to look different. Uh, so I can't use a table in these videos that's going to look exactly the same as videos that you may be accustomed to or you are using in your class or, or whatever. So I, I hopefully I found one that is quite user friendly um, uh, and, and hopefully will be easy to follow. So what we have here, let's scroll to the top. So at the very top, there's our, our entries, there's our, our formula that we're using, same notation as what I've been using uh, in the video. On this side, I've got my number of trials, so n and k uh, number of successes. This very first row now, I have all of the probabilities associated with success. So what we need to do using this table uh, is to find the relevant values for our problem. So first off, uh, across that first row we're looking at the probabilities. Our probability of success is 0.4. So we don't see it there. So I'm going to scroll down uh, to this next page. Okay, now I see I have 0.4 here. Uh, but over here our, our trial size is too small. We have 20 trials. We have 20 students uh, coming into the room. So I'm just going to scroll down until I find the right values. Okay, here we go. Now I have 20 trials. I have my, six, my probability of a success here is 0.4. And I'm choosing uh, five, I think five students, right? Exactly five females. So here's all of our different probability, uh, sorry, our different successes. We want the probability of those 20, that four are females, three, two, one, zero. And then we're just gonna add all of those together. So let's get the first one. So from 20, uh, probability of four. So that's gonna be right here. So we have 20 trials four successes. So of those 20, four of them are successes. The probability associated with each of those successes is 0.4. So that gives us a value uh, of 0 0.035. So this one is 0 0.035. That would be the probability of exactly four students uh, coming in the room that are female, or four of those 20 students are female. Now moving on to uh, three students, oops, 
wrong one. So three students, that's this one here, so 0 0.0123 plus 0 0.0123. Now the probability associated with two students, 0 0031. The probability that only one, oops, that only one is a female, 0 0.005. And the last one is going to be all zeros. So three zeros and a five. And the probability of no females, well, that's basically all zeros. We've already calculated that one here. So the probability that we will that our class will contain less than five is the probability that it contains four plus the probability it contains three plus probability of two, one, and zero. So now I'm just going to add these all together, and I have 0 0.035 plus 0 0.0123, whoops, plus 0 0.0031 plus 0 0.0005 and 0 equals so 0 0.05. So there's about a 5% chance uh, that our class will contain less than five females. Good. Now, uh, part D. I don't mean good. We only have less than five females. I mean good. <laughs> we solved the problem and hopefully it was straightforward and easy enough, uh, easy enough to get through. Now, part D. What is the expected number of female students? So this is uh, relatively straightforward. The expected number uh, of successes or the expected number of female students. That is simply the total number of trials times the probability associated with the success. So in here we have 20 students. I uh, expect 40% of them and the probability of success is 0.4. And so here I would expect to have, uh, this is gonna be eight, eight of those 20 students on average you know, we would expect eight of them uh, ought to be female if that classroom is going to be a perfectly representative of the university population. So my expected value uh, here is equal to eight. What is the variance in standard deviation for the number of female students? So our variance, let's denote it like this, variance, this is equal to the number of trials times proportion or probability of success times the probability of failure. So here I have 20 times 0.4 times 0.6. This one I'll get my calculator for. 20 times 0.4 times 0.6, 4.8. And finally the standard deviation, that's just the square root of my variance, and so my square root of 4.8 is 2.19. Okay, there we have it. Our expected value, expected number of female students was eight, our variance was 4.8, and our standard deviation, 2.19. There we go, there we have it. Uh, a very useful application <laughs> of the binomial probability distribution. Okay, good. Thank you very much for watching.